A dream doesn't become reality through magic. It takes sweat, determination, and hard work. Words of American statesman and former Secretary of State Colin Powell. They underscore the time-tested values that pervade the most critical sectors of Nigeria's agriculture despite the challenges with coordination and harnessing its great economic potentials. Sweat, determination, hard work. The qualities that have remained the driving force behind Nigerian farmers who have borne the responsibility of feeding the nation despite many years of neglect by successive governments blinded by access to free petrodollars. The current economic crunch occasioned by the global fall in the value and price of oil seems to be shaking the country out of its oil-induced reverie. But the teething problems arising from the renewed focus on agriculture remain telltale signs of the many years of neglect. From the farm gate to, to, to receiving here, it took about three months. Oh, yeah. A recent example is Nigeria's formal entrance into the yam export market. Despite the mistakes from that venture, Yam farmers and exporters remain enthusiastic about the economic prospects of international yam trade. On Farmers Market this week, we return to Benue State to meet with yam farmers in some of the largest yam producing communities in Nigeria to share their enthusiasm. Farmers Market, a program that promotes Nigeria's agricultural prowess, identifies the challenges besetting the sector and advocates policies and programs that will help grow Nigeria's agro-economy. The new Benue River Bridge Built across the second largest river in Nigeria, the 1,400-kilometer-long tributary of the River Niger. The bridge heralds motorists into the city center of Makudi, the capital of Benue State. Across the bridge, this statue, well known in Nigeria and beyond as a celebration of agricultural prowess, the food basket by which Benue State is acclaimed, it graces the first major intercession in Makredi. The state itself is named after the Benue River. It has a land mass of over 34,000 square kilometers. Blessed with fertile land, long periods of rainfall, the people of Benue State are naturally inclined towards agriculture. And yam is one of the major crops produced here. In Benue, we pride ourselves with the production of yam. Not just agriculture generally, but yam is the king of all crops for uh, a Benue farmer. As a matter of fact, when a woman is getting married, even if the family cannot afford to give her anything, they will give her yam seedlings to start her farm when she gets to her husband's house. This is a reason why the state is playing a critical role in the export of yam from Nigeria to the United States and the United Kingdom. In fact, many of the critical players in the yam export venture are from Benue State, including the head of the Presidential Committee on Yam Export one of the major exporters and indeed most of the yam exported. Little wonder then that critical actors, especially farmers in Benue State, are drawing valuable lessons from the inaugural attempt at exporting yam. Immediately after the flag of uh, 
the United Kingdom exporter uh, tried to get the yams out of the port, out of Lily Pond, that's the venue uh, of the flag of. But we had, he had challenges. You know, the Apapa area is so congested, the road is so bad that he could not move the container into the port. And the ship that was to carry the yams, the ship left. And he had to wait again until the next one. And that took quite a while uh, before the yams actually left uh, Lagos. And unfortunately, again, it took unusually a long time for the yams to get to the UK. The one to the US left after the quarantine authorities uh, gave the necessary uh, papers. But again, getting to the US, the port of Houston, we had Hurricane Harvey and the ship couldn't come into the port until after the whole exercise. Uh, so again, that took some time before the yams were able to get to their various destinations. But the good story is that the yams were cleared and were taken to the uh, warehouse of the off-taker. Ditto for the yams in the UK. They were all cleared and taken to the warehouse of the off-taker. So uh, the story that the yams were rejected by uh, any government at all is not true. And for the international non-profit at the forefront of the campaign to broaden Nigeria's yam trade as a way of empowering local farmers, especially women, there are lessons from the experience. Our experiences are twofold. One group, one, one exports to the United States and one export to England. Two different experiences. The exports to the United States largely worked about 80% of it was successfully there. Remember, however, let me even start initially. Remember, however, that this was a prototype of some sort. This was a test. So the yams were as conditioned as they ought to have been. Because we could, if we learn from other people's conditioning, we would have taken a long time choosing yams that were not at the stage they were in. But nevertheless, it was a test. It needed to be tested out, the fundamental premise. Then to England, as your own program shows, there was a lot of issues. There was issues around how the arm was treated before it went. There was issue about the delay in the shipping and as a consequence affected a older stock of yam to the detriment of the exporter. But overall, from what I've heard from the exporter, this was a learning experience at some cost, but is willing to see the enterprise through in the future. Yam is highly sensitive to temperature fluctuations. That is why it is essential that the tuber is handled with care. From the experience of the actors in yam exports, one of the key challenges is the transportation of yam from the farm gates to the ports and export destinations. We we'll need to deploy more coal trucks we need uh, government to uh, do more in terms of providing this cold chain management. We will need, even before uh, the yams get into the trucks, we will need uh, yam conditioning centers or warehouses so that uh, we will be able to elongate the shelf life uh, of these yams. Is there a problem with the variety that was transported? Uh, is, is, is there a study as to which one travels better, which one lasts longer, which variety of yam? Yeah, that's this? a very good question because it's actually a learning process for, for all of us. Now, unlike Ghana that is doing only a variety, which is called the Puna variety, in Nigeria, we have so many varieties, up to about 60 varieties of yam. And we need to actually carry out a study to know which variety will do better 
uh, under shipping and which varieties should we actually take by air. Uh, we have selected five varieties for now, uh, white yarn varieties for now, uh, for export, to popularize for export. Uh, the off-taker in the United Kingdom, because he had experience, the similar experience before, but he told us that he found out that the Hembang Kwase variety did better. Because why the other varieties uh, uh, could go bad very quickly, the Hembang Kwase variety withstood the, the, the rigor and the pressure of shipping. So it's a learning process, it's a, a, an expensive one anyway, but I think going forward, we will be able to separate the varieties and we'll be able to say, if you want to do shipping, this is the variety you should handle. But if we want to go by air, and I can assure you we have already discussed with British Airways, so that from Abuja, we will also start doing uh, air shipment of our yams. I think that will reduce uh, the time. You can imagine six hours to London, instead of three weeks by ship, you know, and uh, just few hours to the United States of America instead of about 45 days. Another is the bureaucracy involved in the export of agricultural produce. The yam that went to the United States went slightly problem free because the only problem was the official intervention was a bit too much. And attempts to quarantine Nigerian products for international consumption sometimes I would say should have started earlier, not started at the port, because that means that we are taking aggressive steps. Yes, it's understandable because of past experiences, but it's also important to understand that this is not government investment, this is private investment, and someone is taking a risk on this matter. So there's a, a, a greater lesson to coordinate intervention from government and from the private sector and to talk to each other so that we can do these things at the earlier stage, not at the last stage when it's going on. Yandeva Mabai is one of the investors in the export of Nigeria yam. The 48 tons he successfully shipped to the United States have become a reference point to the great potentials in yam export once Nigeria gets past the learning curve. Thomas Market met up with him in Boko to hear his experience firsthand. At Yandev's prompting, we head for Zakibiam to see the facilities for conditioning yam for export and, of course, Nigeria's largest yam market. You can as well get yams in large quantity in Boko, Wanune, Burugu, Chowanye, and Kasinala, and there are so many others. But the major ones, the major ones, Ubad, Zakibiam, Todonga, Kandu. These are areas where, like in Zakibia, from Monday to Friday, at least you are sure of 100 trailer loads of uh, yam. Zakibia is less than an hour's journey from Boko. That is because we had to shorten the trip by crossing the river Katsinaala at Buruku. It's shorter this way by over 30 minutes. It's a most exciting crossing because there is no bridge and vehicles have to be ferried across in this wooden boat. There is another road, but it's longer and it is pothole ridden. The crossing exposes us to the great natural resources of Benue State. River Katsina is the main tributary of the River Benue. The two rivers cut across seven of the 23 local government areas of the state, providing a great water resource for dry season farming, a resource waiting to be tapped. In Zakibiam, we begin from the Yam Conditioning Center provided by the Nigerian Export Promotion Council. Yeah, when you buy your yams from the farms or the markets, you bring them here for cleaning. You 
because normally the yams uh, there are some uh, soil distance left on the yams, so they bring them here, clean them, and you do the packaging here. The leftover packs from the inaugural yam export are still in the building. This conditioning center is less than five minutes drive from the Zakibiam yam market. This is where Yandev prepared 48 tons of yam for export to the United States. Normally with U.S., you have to register with the Federal Department of Agriculture. They give you a certificate to import into their country plant. Uh, so I got that certificate. So the moment my yams got the other side, uh, there, weren't, there wasn't much problems. It took customs about 48 hours to clear the, these things. Then quarantine took over, they took the whole uh, yams to their center. There they fumigated it. So after the fumigation, they released it to my agent. The, it didn't take 24 hours. With quarantine, they released the, uh, the goods to the agent who took them to the warehouse. There weren't issues. Did you have any issues with quarantine services here? With quarantine services here, when we got to Lagos, the, in fact, they were the people who were even helping us to package it. The only uh, thing that happened was, I think uh, from the beginning, uh, they didn't know exactly the specifications of the kind of yams that uh, America wanted. So they insisted we should cut the head. So by cutting the head, once you cut the head, you know the yams were rotten quicker. So that was the only mistake, but I think it was all a learning process. Yam. Yam. Yam everywhere. You know that you are in Zakibiam Yam market when you see young men display the fine craft of loading yam into trucks for transportation to places as far flung as Lagos. A huge crowd of spectators fascinated by the work we are doing here in Zakibiam. This is Zakibian Yam Market, the biggest in Nigeria and indeed in other parts of West Africa. I'm told that every day uh, at least a hundred trucks of yam leave this place to other parts of the country uh, and indeed other parts of West Africa. And what has happened since Yam Export began? Let's find out from Tavishma, who is one of the leaders of the market. Thank you very much for Thank talking you, to us, Tavishma. Mm. Tell us. How has yam export fed, uh, yam trade fed since export started in Zakibian market? Since this export yam started, we have very, very good marketing customers and uh, our production is buying with farmers quick. Today we start market because we do this market from Monday to Saturday. Okay. On Sunday is a uh, there's no market. So we resume here on Monday. But this Monday, we, as we start, we see if you came here like Tuesday, Thursday, you see every where will be chock up for trucks and buyers and the goods. In Benue State, as in many other parts of the country, a great percentage of the agricultural workforce is made up of women. They have been positioning themselves to reap the benefits of yam export after many decades of hard work, poor local sales and post-harvest losses. Women groups like this one, led by Mwes and Yim, have been learning about growing and handling yam for export through a rural farmer empowerment drive by Senegos. Uh, 
Mwese is a lawyer, a law teacher, and a former commissioner for women affairs in Benue State with a strong passion for agriculture. When we are talking of Nigeria exporting yams, Benue State must be at the very heart of the discourse. And little wonder why it was Benue that it was um, a Benue farmer that became like the experimental uh, person, so to speak. So now, one of our brothers, so to speak, has already done it. Uh, the success of it is uh, akin to, uh, uh, to when a, a baby is just trying to crawl, you will make uh, mistakes here and there. But this is an opportunity that we must maximize on. That's why we, we in partnership with Synagos, Synagos is leading the way, uh, the, the training is going on for uh, farmers in Benue State so that the errors we made at the first attempt we will not repeat them in subsequent attempts and everyone will get a benefit. There, there are uh, countless benefits that uh, are available if this uh, market is uh, maximized. Moise and our women groups are not perturbed by the mistakes from the first attempt at the yam export. They understand that any venture that will become successful takes time and practice. You, you win some, you lose some. You make errors, but when you make errors, it's an opportunity for you to learn from the mistakes that you have made. So the women are not deterred at all, and personally also not deterred at all. As a matter of fact, the, uh, my farm size for next year has um, I've made it about four times bigger than what I made for this year because I understand that I, I want to cash in on this opportunity. L uh, last year when I was working for this year's farm, I, I didn't preempt that we were going to have this kind of opportunity. So I worked in relation to the market size I had at that time or I knew at that time. But now that I know that the market is larger, I have made provision for the market that is available. And that's exactly what the women in the cooperatives I work with are doing. The women themselves are a bit about the prospect of producing yam for the international market. Uh -uh. I am even demanding more seed yam to plant more than what I've done before. Because the farmers are just going ahead as the U.S. are looking for more yam. I want to plant plenty yams so that I will be a millionaire in the next two years or four, by the grace of God. <laughs> there is no doubt that Nigeria can use this infectious enthusiasm, especially at a time when the country looks to agricultural exports for the much needed foreign exchange. This is the reason why those actively promoting yam export are concerned about the hitherto unknown law prohibiting the act. This is a viable business for many people. And that everybody that is involved is excited at the prospect of opening up a new channel for people. We have chosen to work, for example, in Benue State, to work with women farmers, to create a cooperative for them, to be part of this chain. They're very excited, and if this law does not change, that's not going to happen. We have also been ready to invest in the conditioning center to improve the quality of the yarn that comes through from Benue to the ports, which is one of the states we did. But we can't do that until this law is changed. If there's any message from this, government needs to step to the plate and quickly change this law because there are risks to everybody involved if the law is not changed. It is indeed comforting for many to know that even the National Assembly shares these concerns and is working towards remedying the situation. Uh, we are appealing that now we've taken to start an initiative already in the National Assembly in the Senate and uh, by the grace of God the House of Reps will do the same thing and um, very shortly we'll get over that problem. Everybody sympathizes with that state. Uh, you just can't believe that a Nigerian in a position of authority will ban Nigeria exporting food, but will allow Nigeria importing food. It's, it's, it doesn't add up. No person, no matter, I don't know what aspect of nationalism, patriotism, such a person will bring on the table to justify you not encouraging export and you encouraging import. It, does, it doesn't add up.
That's Farmer's Market for this week. Farmer's Market returns same time, same station next week. Thanks for watching.